to be your friend. My name is Dracula. I want you to understand it's a bad hit on me who I am. I've always wanted to be friends with people. Come closer, closer, closer. I want to be your friend and take a little bite. I used to be that way. I have changed. The past is done. We have to move on. You move on and I move on. <laughs> Times have changed, you know, and very rough in Transylvania. It's very difficult to get by there. The weather is bad people killing each other. I don't know why they do that. I don't like to do it wantonly, you know, wasted. We all have our own thing, you know. I want to confess to you. I happen to have a bad blood problem. And I found out it's genetic. We all have to live with something. And because I have a bad habit, you don't have to follow in my footsteps. But you know, when I'm around in the daytime and I see what people do to each other, I find they're worse bloodsuckers than I am. Forgive me for telling you that. I want to confess to you what I see. In one way or another, people do these things. And so I want you to know I tried to change. I have been around a long time, and I've met with some of the finest people you can imagine. I remember, I remember taking a little bite from Dr. Ruth. <laughs> Dr. Ruth, you're charming. <laughs> she was so interested in sex, she didn't even know I took a little bite. <laughs> when you listen to Dr. Ruth, you think you're losing your hearing and your mind. And then, as you listen to Henry Kissinger, you know, Irma Bombeck said that if you miss the first few words of Henry Kissinger, it's all over. Now, that lady knew things. I never got to meet Irma but I understand she was very funny. And so are we, you know, if you think about what goes on in the daytime, we are very funny. People are afraid, you know, to face eternity. I want to be frank with you. They watch television. They want to be distracted from where they are and who they are. I think, if I dare tell you, I think they needn't fear death. They watch television 25 hours a day. They're dead already by the time they arrive at the doorstep of eternity. I want you to be my friend. I want you to know I care about you. I know people tell you that all the time. 
Everybody wants to be your friend. But you can trust me. You know, I fly at night. It's very lonely at night to fly by yourself. And people don't like to let me visit with them at night. I live in a different world than most people. And I try to get by. I want to tell you something that you should know. My psychiatrist says, I will get adjusted to what's going on in the world. It's very difficult to do that. I've been around for years and years, and the world keeps getting worse. There's a program on 60 Minutes I watched. Oh, I stay tuned to what goes on. And a fellow by the name of Morley Safer said, the more they investigated the story, the worse and worse it got. I think that's what's going on in our society. The more you hear what's going on and see what's going on, the worse and worse it gets. What will our children do? Oh, yes. Yes, I have children too. Don't you? What will they do in a hundred and two hundred and three hundred years from now? Join with me. Dracula confesses. Should I confess? Yes. When I wake up in the morning, I have the same fears and concerns and anxieties that you have. Nothing is new. What will tomorrow bring? I am like you. I feel. I feel. A bad blood habit. My doctor tells me that I can give it up. In fact, I want to give you the good news. I work in a hospital now, at night, in the hematology department. I don't need to take a little bite. I am giving up the bad habit. You know, a friend of mine by the name of Mark Twain said that you cannot kick a bad habit off the top of a ladder all at once. You have to take it down one rung at a time. That's right. You may wonder why I have an accent. I was with Henry too long. You know Henry. Henry is a very bright man. But staying around him too long, I picked up the German accent. So forgive me. I tried to get away from the accent, but it's difficult. <laughs> Do you have problems in your life? Do you think you're the only one with problems? I've had many problems over the years. Sometimes. I just don't know if I can make it. I wake up in the oddest times, the night, and it's very, very lonely. I fly by myself at night by the seat of my pants. I know it's not right to tell you my problems, but I am confessing. Sometimes I think things are a nightmare. I try to get them all together, but they won't fit. Is that your problem, too? Things don't fit. You watch television, and you have to say, people are crazy. And they tell me I am crazy, that I am off the wall, loony, 
you know, they hurt me. If you watch television, you have to ask yourself, who is Luli? Who is off the wall? I read these newspapers, the Inquirer, the Globe, the Star. I can't believe what I read. I can't believe what I see on cable. My doctor tells me, you better believe it. You better believe it. My doctor talks right through his nose. Doctor, couldn't you talk another way? This is the way I was born. Where are you from, doctor? I'm from New York City. Why, why, why do you ask that? I just thought I'd inquire to show that I care. Well, it offends you. No, it's perfectly all right for you to ask about my background. I went to Brooklyn College in New York City, and uh, I tried very hard to be someone, but the problem is that people are always opposed to you getting somewhere. You know what I mean? Ha, ha, of course I know what you mean. They're always opposed to me doing what I do. But you're not going to do it anymore, are you? I try not to. How's the job working out? at the university? I work in the blood department, you know. I don't have to take a little bite anymore. Well, we've been working on that for a little while. And you're doing very well. I want you to know that. You sound, if I may say so, doctor, like that fellow from 60 Minutes. Which one is that? The Andy Rooney man. Oh, I don't know about you. That one? Yes. Yes. Well, we all have to sound like somebody, you know. We're not unique. I think I am. I think you told me I am unique, Doctor. Yes, in a sense you are. But remember this. We're all, in a sense, bloodsuckers. So you don't have to really take it upon yourself to feel bad. Doctor, you're a good man. Well, I try to be a man. In this world, you never know who is and who isn't. And it really doesn't make a difference, does it anymore? You sound just like Andy. I don't know about you. Is that the way he sounds? Yes. Yes. Well. We all have to sound like somebody. We look like somebody. We all look like human beings. You know that. So we have different characteristics and traits and personalities, Dracula. But we're all the same, basically. Yes, I know. I'm trying to become like you, Doctor. I want to be human. It's been taking a few hundred years, but I think you're going to get there. I really think you're going to get there. I don't know about you, but I think, I think you may make it. Doctor, you're so kind to me. Yes, well, we all have to be kind at some time. You pay me for that, so I think you deserve to have something, some information. You know, I have run into people over the years, Doctor, like Ronald Coleman. Oh, you knew Ronald? Darling, darling, darling. Oh, yes, I knew him. I flew to his house one time. I took a little bite. Years passed. I'm sorry. So sometimes people are not all there after I visit. But you are changing, aren't you? You are changing. I notice the characteristic. Is it true that you go to school to learn to do a different accent? I just wonder, you didn't tell me about that. Oh, yes. I want to sound like you. Like me? Yes. I want to talk like people in the city talk. 
Tudi knows, not like I do. I scare little children and people. No. No, it's only that when they don't know who you are. They have to get accustomed to you and feel empathetic. And that's what therapy is all about, Dracula, to get empathy. Yes, I know that. I want to thank you, doctor, because you're the third doctor I've been seeing. What happened to the other two? I took a little bite. You took a little bite? I got carried away. Ha, ha, ha! But you told me you're not going to do that anymore. Well, I'm human, aren't I? And we all, all sin, you know. If we didn't sin, where would the world be? I don't understand that. Well, you know the church forgives you if you sin. Yes, but you're not a churchgoer, are you? Well, yes, in a sense I am, because I sin, and I ask for forgiveness because of what I've done. Dracula, we all sin. It's the way things are. When we get up in the morning, we're already sinning. Yes, I know. I want to be, I want to be without sin. Dracula, there's no such thing. It's like, it's like lying. I don't understand. It's like lying. Everybody lies. You don't lie, doctor. You're the most honest man I know in all my life. And I have been around for hundreds of years. Dracula, everybody has to lie. You know, you know, Dracula, you have to understand this. If we told the truth, there'd be no civilization. You understand that? Yes. Yes, I understand that. The truth can kill us all. You understand that? Yes, I understand that. Dracula, I like you. Yes, I understand. And I feel, I feel it one way. You know, I, I talk like this because I like who I am. And I want to be at one with you. At times I almost feel like you're human. But I am, Doctor. You tell me I'm getting more and more human every time we meet over the hundred years. Track. You shouldn't tell that. You make me feel bad. Well, we have to tell the truth sometimes, Doctor. Yes, but you shouldn't tell it to me now. I'm your doctor. Oh. You want to lie. You want me to lie. No, I, I didn't say that. I just said you should be kind of concerned about what you say and how you say it. Even to me, I have feelings. Yes, I know. I know. So do I. I feel for people. How are the kids, Dracula? They're okay. They're getting along all right? Yes, doctor. Do you feel at one with them? Yes, doctor. Do you feel it one? Do you feel it one with me, Drac? I want to be a doctor. I want to be your friend. Doctor. Doctor is only a title. It doesn't mean anything. Yes, I understand. You've helped me tremendously, doctor, to be more of myself. <sighs> But I still sin now and then. We all do, Drac. You have to face yourself and understand that sinning is in. You know, if you didn't sin, you'd be inhuman. Yes, I know. Maybe I shouldn't 
try to become human. No, it's a nice rap. You, you, you see what goes on during the daytime. If you watch the television, you know, I, I watch it now and then, but if you watch it too long, you can become unstable. And you become, you know, unfeeling. You, it, there's so much blood flowing. That's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make a, a pun with you, Drac. I'm just trying to tell you that we live in a very blood-savage society, and you have to understand that. I know. So why do people make fun of me because I took a little bite? I only took a little bite. What's the problem in taking just a little bite, doctor? Well, people have their thing, Drac. Yes, I know. But they take a big bite. You know, a lot of people can't take it anymore in the end. They take their own lives. Yeah, I know. Well, it gets to people. It gets to them. I ran into somebody, Doctor. I don't know how to tell you this. They can't talk. They what? They can't talk. I'm sorry. I don't understand that everybody talks. They even talk when they don't have anything to say. They keep talking. Yes, I know. But this person could not talk. What, what are you trying to tell me, Drac? He had what is called a strangled voice. A, str a what? A what kind of voice? Strangled. He sounded like Robert Kennedy Jr., Diane Reem on NPR. What kind of voice do they have? I can't talk. They talk like that. Yes, they talk like that. So you know people strangle. Yes, I know that. I've, I've, I've run into that. But it's incurable, isn't it? No, it can be cured. There is a doctor I know who helps to cure it. Well, why are you interested why are you interested in cures of a problem like that? Nobody has that kind of condition. It's exceptional. It's like you with your, your bad blood habit. Yes, I know. But I know that he can help to cure a problem that the medical profession says cannot be cured. Like they said over the years that I cannot change. Well, you can't change. Yes, I know I can. And you know. Yes, I know that. So why are you making that point, Drac? Because sometimes, you know, the medical profession gets it wrong. Look, I want to tell you this because I like you. You have helped me to be more of myself than I knew I could be. Well, that's what I do. I'm I'm a doctor of help. Yes, but they tell these people who can't talk. They strangle like that. There's no help. And their doctors doom and gloom. And for 135 years they have maintained, doctor, there is no cure. And they have no cure. And this one doctor has a cure. And I hope you put the book so people can see and they can download free what this doctor says. And everybody wants to kill him. They want to kill him? Oh, yes, because he makes them look dumb. Dumb? Dumb. Dumb? Dumb, very dumb. And all he does he shows them how to put the voice up in the face where I talk and you have too much schnoz in the face, doctor. Yes, I know, but I, I, I was raised in, in the city, New York City. I, I, I like my voice this way. You sound just like Andy Rooney. Just like Andy Rooney. Well, we all have to sound like somebody. Do you think that you can help this doctor? He's all by himself, alone. The only doctor in the world 
reporting ongoing cures of the strangled, hopeless voice called spasmodic dysphonia. No, I, I don't want to get involved with that kind of thing. That's not my, my gig. I know, but you help me, and I will help you to see a new bright future where these people can learn to talk normally again. You know, it is rumored. A lot of them take their own lives, and that is a sin. Well, there are lots of ways you can sin, Jack. We all sin, you know, we have to make a living. I want to work with you, but I have to get paid, and lately I haven't been paying. I just wanted to tell you that. I know business has been bad. Let me tell you that, doctor. Business has been very bad. I thought you had a job at the university. I do, but they don't know I'm there. I work voluntarily, and nobody knows that I'm on the faculty. You didn't tell anybody? No. I fly in at night, and I fly out by the time they show up. That's pretty good. You ought to tell them you want a job and you want to get paid for it. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to support your kids. How do you get by? Well, it's not all that easy. I fly around, and you know, that's how I make it. That's not a bad way of doing that, Drac. I know. But, Doctor, I sin. Drac, we all sin. You know, if all the people who were sinning were put away, there'd be no society left. Do you know that? No society. There'd only be a few people left. Think about it, Drac. I want you to understand, sinning is in. I know. You know, I still feel guilty because I sinned. Don't, Drac. Get with it. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. You'll get a heart. You'll get a heart like the Tin Man. You just keep doing what I tell you to do. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>